My name is Steve Haltwanger. I'm a medical doctor and a clinical nutritionist. And we're going to talk about some bioenergetic technologies today. Basically, this is an overview lecture. I'm going to go through some of the slides very quickly, and uh, others we'll spend some time with. Now, if you look at the development of the science of electronic medicine over the last 200 years, you'll find that people have now come to the point where you can design a waveform that will have a drug-like effect. And this is not information that is widely available in the medical field because it is economically uh, damaging to certain interests. And so you look at the fact that this information just really doesn't have any uh, parents. It's, it's more like a lot of adopted stepchildren running around trying to find a home. Uh, so electronic medicine is not uh, widely recognized as a, on a scientific basis. Now, this is a self-explanatory slide that people, when they find a truth, uh, are often ridiculed or it's opposed. And third, it's accepted uh, as self-evident. And this is very common in any uh, scientific endeavor because you have the population of people that are married to certain concepts or paradigms, and they literally never change their minds, most of them. They basically die out, and the new people take over. Uh, this is, uh, <laughs> that's how it works. Uh, so the, the, sir, I think Thomas Bohm uh, probably got that name wrong. Uh, scientific revolutions. Now, Royal Raymond Rife was one of these people that was violently opposed during his lifetime. And he developed a microscope. Now, his work with living tissues... And at the same time, nearly, we had the electron microscope that was working with dead tissues. And basically, uh, doctors were told, and it's still around, that you can't see viruses with a live microscope. It's impossible and because of the, uh, the theory of optics. Now, there's some people in, in Germany that have developed uh, an ergonom microscope that are now is able to see viruses. And I've actually been in situations where, at a laboratory, where microbiologists refused to look in the microscope because he knew he couldn't see the virus. And he was afraid. It was like, don't look through the telescope with Galileo because you might see something that might violate what you know. And it threatens people to see things that violate what they think they know. So most people are not scientists in the scientific field. I think they're technicians. Scientist is someone who examines data and is willing to change their mind if they find they are wrong. But you'll find that I think 95% of people in the scientific field are more technicians than anything. Rife discovered that he could use frequency mach uh, machines, generate equipment with um, plasma tubes, frequencies with plasma tubes, and he would adjust the frequency while looking at organisms under the microscope till they literally exploded. And he called this the mortal oscillatory resonance. Now, this is only one, or mortal oscillatory rate, this is only one way of using this type of equipment. My field and my work has been done toward regeneration as opposed to destruction. But if you're looking at killing microbes, this is one way of doing it. Now, resonant frequency basically is a fundamental property of matter, and that every type of matter, molecule, cell has its own unique wave signature or frequency. So it can actually uptake energy if you're giving that. The example is a group of troops walking across a bridge. If they get at the right rate, that bridge literally can oscillate itself to destruction. If anybody's ever driven an old car and got to a certain point of the highway, it starts vibrating extensively. You go faster or slower than that, than that speed, it would not vibrate as much. That's a resonance rate that you're seeing in, you, in common life, and people are nodding their head knowing they've driven those old cars before. So you basically can um, change or input part energy into a system by using its resonance rate. Now, biological tissues and cells are organized by standing waves of energy. We talk about constructive interference on the inside of the cell, destructive interference on the outside of the cell. I like to put this up there because it ties together uh, the concept of the large and the small. 
If you look at an electron, it has an inward wave and an outer wave. And the theory is the outer wave, inward wave comes from all the electrons in the universe, which means that every point is the center. It's kind of a hard concept to grasp, but when you begin to see physics in this way, you'll see that every electron is connected to every other electron. That means everything is connected to everything else. It's kind of a, a very mind-blowing concept. But if you look at cells, you'll see that cells have an inward flowing current and an outward flowing current. And people like Merrill Garnett have been studying this for many years. He's an electrochemist who developed poly MBA, and I think they probably have a booth here. Um, now, Rife generated signals. He monitored the destruction of the pathogens with his microscope. And he would take something from an active to a dead state, and you'd actually see the material go from a glowing violet to a dead black uh, when the task was accomplished. So he was actually able to look at the structure of these, of these organisms and look at them in real time. And people really have not duplicated this work uh, because of the limitations in optical theory Although people that don't worry about the theory and get to the lab bench and do things, they see things, find things that people with the theory would never look for. Now, forced oscillatory resonance is just one path, and he demonstrated in, that you could um, resonate at specific frequencies and destroy microbes. And, you know, this was an interesting concept in its time, and people still think about this as the only way to utilize electromedicine. Uh, and it's a very narrow um, definition of, of this type of work. Now, there was another man named Malakowski who uh, in the 20s took a different path than Rife, and he generated a uh, multi-wave oscillator. It basically created lots of different frequencies. His concept was that the cells would absorb what they needed and kind of like a cafeteria in a sense, and you would take what you needed and leave the rest. And uh, he had some uh, reports of healing. He, I think, was killed in New York in a traffic accident on his way to a, a con, uh, to present his material at a scientific, at, I think at a hospital where they're going to do some research. So that was an interesting uh, development in his life. Now, there's a guy named Jimmy Holman over in Texas in Plano who's basically working with equipment that is works on uh, regeneration of uh, tissues, and uh, he has websites if you look him up in the future. And uh, his, he thinks that 98% uh, of, the, uh, of the science is in the regeneration product. Uh, it's holman.net, I think is his website. Uh, Nikola Tesla was probably the leading genius behind, I mean, he's the one that basically bought us the electrical world. Uh, many of his ideas were, were adopted by others. Uh, he brought us AC current. Uh, Edison wanted to use DC current for transmission of power. And DC current, you can only get a few miles away from the power plant. With AC, you can go thousands of miles and transmit power. So, it, of course, it was the one that took over. He got very little out of it. He died penniless. But uh, he came up with the idea of wireless transmission of power and power generation at one place and collection at another place. You know, it's kind of similar to solar cells in a sense, except instead of the sun being the generator, it's a man-made generator. And I use this concept because it helps you understand the wireless transmission of energy from uh, the proper types of devices, and you can use selective targets in the cells. And we're going to talk about that if I can get to the slides. I'm just trying to briefly go over some of these fundamental concepts that makes other things more sensible. Now, Alexander Gerbich basically discovered that living cells put out waves of energy, or he called them mitogenic rays. Now, people did not have the equipment at the time he was living in order to explain his observations that, 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 inter, that waves of energy or rays of energy could affect living creatures, living cells. And this was later uh, when Fritz Popp was developing. He, you should look him up if you're interested in this area. He's the, one of the leading stars in this type of um, uh, medicine knowledge. And he came up with the idea of biophotons, theoretically. And if you start reading, some of the books you should read are uh, all of James Oshman's works and articles. Um, uh, Lynn McTaggart's work, The Field, this is kind of a good overview. Uh, Robert O. Becker, 